First off, I have a little announcement to make. Just after my last video uploaded, I scooted on past the thousand subscriber mark. Can you can you excuse me for just just a second? Thanks. Now I know it's not that big of a deal at all, but I am eternally grateful for each and every one of my first thousand subscribers. Oh, is that button still red for you? Well, good news is I'm now taking subscriptions for the 2000 sub club. Trademark that. Welcome back to the channel. First off, do you know what time it is? It is Game Boy time. I'm gonna use that every single time that I talk about a Game Boy. Just fair warning, it's it's not stopping. So if you're around about 15 videos ago, you'll remember that I did a uh, full shell replacement IPS mod for a DMG Game Boy that made it all white, and then I gave it away. My friend Milks actually won it, and uh, so I shipped it off to Great Britain. And it shows up in his content here and there. Now, ever since then, I had been wanting to do more Game Boy mods and everything, but life got in the way. My uploads started slowing down a little bit and I just never got around to it. But over the last couple months, I had slowly started buying up some games and some consoles when I found a good deal. I did a video about a 50 game mystery box that I found on eBay. So in all that, I actually managed to snag up a couple of Game Boy Colors, a couple more DMGs. By the way, the nickname for the original Game Boy is the DMG because of the model number. It's the DMG-01. And just like the Game Boy Color, it's actually the CGB-001. So yeah, it was around that time I started looking for different updated, you know, screens and mods for the Game Boy Color because I wanted to do a Game Boy Color mod. Uh, and I found the Funny Plane Q5 version 2 laminated screen. I must have ordered it like a day or two after it came out, just coincidentally, because I couldn't find anything about it until around when it arrived. It was a little bit daunting without a whole lot of tutorials online, so I sat on it for a couple weeks and then decided I felt comfortable enough to do my the install, the first install, live on Twitch. And aside from my kind of shoddy soldering skills, I managed to get it to work. By the way, follow me on Twitch. We do a podcast every Thursday called The Tie Cast. It's panel style, I get a bunch of content creators on, 9 p.m. Eastern. Do it, the link is in the description or right there. That's, that's where you go. I also do play games and do some live mods like I did with the Game Boy. So to do this screen replacement, you do need to solder seven points on the PCB. So there's one solder point for the touch sensor. There's a cable that you have to solder both ends to tap into the power module. And then there's two wires, so four more solder points to tap into the start and select button back onto the module itself to do the hotkeys. And like I said, I had trouble finding a whole lot of documentation on the installation of this modification. I had found three videos at the time, and each of them had a different solder point for the start and select buttons, which I understand because I think they're all in the series, and so you can tap in at different points, but that was confusing initially. So anyway, I wrapped up my stream and I turned on the Game Boy and it worked. The touch sensor worked to adjust the screen brightness, uh, but the hotkeys didn't work. Holding the start and select keys to make the adjustments to the screen and change the color of the logo, that wasn't working. I also realized after a few days that the Game Boy would shut itself off after about four minutes of being on. So something wasn't right. Before I go on, the screen is actually quite amazing. It's the version two, so the front glass and, and panel are actually laminated together and all in one piece and it just drops right in. You do have to use a third party shell uh, because it's way too much work. It's not even worth it to try to modify an original. Luckily, third party shells are extremely high quality now and you can get pretty much any color that you can imagine and custom ones and everything. You notice the screen's actually 25% bigger than the original Game Boy Color screen. Yeah, I went for this all white build. So some other features include the ability to change the color of the logo, of the Game Boy Color logo, 20 something different colors, which is really cool looking. You can find adjust the placement of the screen. You can adjust the brightness. And then there's also five display modes, which looks to just be adding like an, a scan line effect, basically black lines in between the pixels uh, of varying thicknesses. And so it kind of gives that effect of like those fake scan lines if you on emulators. But I prefer just the 
original display. Oh, and why did I use Power Rangers Rescue as my test for all the Game Boys? Fun fact is that the title screen of Power Rangers Rescue has the widest color gamut of any Game Boy Color game ever made. I'm, I'm just kidding, it, I had two copies and so it was the easiest to show side by side. So I did mention my issues with the first install and I was all set to make a video about like how I just couldn't get it to work, but I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give it one more go. And so I took one of my other Game Boy Colors that I had bought and I transplanted the PCB from that one and which required me to resolder. I had actually tried unsoldering every wire and resoldering it and I still had the same issue. So it could have been a faulty PCB, but that worked fine when I put it back into a, a regular shell with a regular screen. So when I when I did the swap with the new PCB, the start and select hotkeys worked, but my the touch sensor didn't. And so I think I may have damaged a little bit, but with enough solder, I was able to get it working. The battery issues are gone. All the functions work 100%. The screen is absolutely gorgeous, and I'm a little bit obsessed now. Having the colored logo light up is a really neat little trick too. It's probably my favorite part. Now, I didn't test it myself, but looking online, it seems like the screen draws a little bit more power than the stock screen, which says a lot because it's, I mean, it's fully lit, it's lit. And that leads me to my next point is that you're dealing with 20 to 30 year old handheld hardware, which was the plaything of some dirty ass children in the 90s. Trust me, I was there. The fact that they function at all is actually a pretty big testament to Nintendo engineering and build quality. But the chance of dealing with issues is fairly high. All of this hardware is fragile. I just saw BB Retro live streaming a DMG IPS mod and just slightly over tightening the screws on the PCB caused the whole panel to be destroyed. The other thing is that it seems like these companies are operating on pretty tight margins, low volume, and so it leaves a lot to be desired in terms of customer service and support. You kind of have to fight them if something goes wrong or if you get a defective item or if they ship the wrong piece. So don't be surprised if you have to rebuy parts or get denied for replacement or repair parts. So that leads me to my next point. Who do I think this is for? Now, if you're not very experienced with soldering and you've never modded a handheld console before, I probably wouldn't do this one first. I would do like the DMG because you only have to solder two points. It's for the speaker. So when you break it down, this is the best way to play Game Boy Color games and original Game Boy games too, especially if you want to use authentic hardware. It really is insane to see how dim the original Game Boy Color screen is, especially next to a fully backlit IPS display panel. So if you have a bit of patience, a Game Boy Color, and have some decent soldering skills, it's a fun little project. Just don't be surprised if you need to do it a couple times to get it working 100%. But modding Game Boys has kind of become this little passion of mine and I'm, I'm excited to do more. What about you? Have you ever modded a handheld console before? Was it a success or was it a failure? Do you buy pre-modded units from people on Etsy and eBay and stuff like that? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you aren't already, and follow me on everything. Follow me on follow me everywhere. It's kind of a broad request, but Tynology Gaming on every platform, Twitter, Instagram, not Twitch. Twitch is just twitch.tv slash technology. Have a good one. I will see you next week. Cheers.